Good morning, welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in Grung Zone 6B in New England, where I'm dodging the heat by being inside this morning. Oh, mercy, it's been raining so much, it's like super, super humid. I'm gonna hide out in here and I'm so glad you could join me. Everything's been really, really up in the air and all over the place lately. So I'm trying to be really flexible and it is tricky. One of the most disgusting, unexpected things that we ran into with all the water is just the sheer amount of mud. Um, I'm finding out a little something about deep litter chicken runs and what it means to have a static run and to be running your goats in a pen as opposed to a pasture. So with all the rain, we have been dealing with just a revolting amount of mud mixed with so much poop. I'm so glad we were able to get some wood chips and uh, get those down in the runs. At the end, I'll show you. I took some footage of what it looks like now as opposed to what it looked like then. Ugh. What I've got coming up is a bunch of footage from last week during which Bill and I exploited moments of sunshine to try and get some stuff done. I'm pretty sure I've never sweated quite that much in my life. So in the middle of all of this chaos, it's nice to have some things to count on. Uh, we've been bringing in snow peas and snap peas and shelling peas. Okay, all the peas. We've been bringing in all the peas. They're delicious. I've got some little pocket harvests in the freezer. We've pretty much eaten our way through the June bearing strawberries and um, have started nibbling on the ever bearing strawberries <laughs> that are coming in. So I don't know if I'll be making jam with my own berries. More, more than likely I'll be making jam with farm stand berries. Um, they're, so, they're just so good. This mountain of wood chips came in this morning. This is all going in the animal runs today. It is July 1st, 2023. So, the, oh God, this is a revolting oh, task. Yeah. This stinks. Um, you doing okay? Ah, uh, the smell of produce. Breeze, 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 please. Oh man, the chickens seem to be enjoying themselves though. Oh, well, they're having a, having a good scavenger hunt. We've just been adding straw to it, and it's pretty gross in there, y'all. It is it is pretty muddy. So Bill is coming through, and he's been raking and filling in spots, and we'll put the uh, wood chips over that. We limed the run like it was Christmas time, and it still smells pretty bad, but it's not quite as revolting. And then chips are gonna start going in. Oh yeah. What do you think of this? Totally forgot to mention the tomatoes. Once upon a time this year, I tried winter sowing and I got like, I'd say a 45, 50% germination rate. Um, and then it got unseasonably hot for like two days and everything fried. So much for the poppies and the peppers and most of the tomatoes. And it, yeah, it did 50-50 um, on this thing. If you get tricky weather in the middle of winter sowing, it's all over. I think this coming winter, I'm gonna start some of this stuff in under lights and the hardier stuff I'll put out. Anyway, <laughs> um, so in the process, I only wound up with like a handful of tomato plants and I put them into the garden proper. We fought blight in the main garden two years in a row. So I have been wanting to try plants on that side. This space on the side of the house that is it's just, it's wasted, right? It's got really great daylight. Uh, so I have been wanting to put something over there that's a little more substantial than like the tobacco that we did there last year. Which is not to say the tobacco was entirely a bust. Uh, we, we didn't take care of it, but it grew fantastic on that side of the house in pots. So we got some raised beds and um, I picked up, for science, I picked up a whole bunch of tomato starts at Stillman's Farm. They had a whole bunch of heirlooms and I bought like two of each. 
Okay, I bought like 24 tomato plants, I think, for science. I got a trunk full of tomato plants. Anyway, that's what I put in on the side of the house because I know that these plants are gonna be quality and I'm putting them over there as my science experiment um, to see how they do on that side of the house and what I wanna keep on that side. Meanwhile, we put in some raised beds in the main garden, so I've got the winter sown tomatoes that made it in the main garden. Maybe some spillover. There was definitely spillover for science. Whatever, I'll show you. Meanwhile, it rained. It rained so much, it's been so soggy. Which, if you live in a raised bed, is good because you've got great drainage, right? My tomatoes are out of control. All right, so we've got the trellis arches in, and the next job is gonna be to get these folks up on the trellis, my indeterminates that are leaving town because we've had so much good rain. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be my big job for today. Y'all, I am not entirely sure how to even begin this process. There is so much going on in this. I'm gonna have to see if I can figure out which stocks belong to whom and yeah. Let's see what we got here. This guy is a different guy. I'm gonna set these up in here with some twist ties and see what we can do for these folks. Um, they're just plain old twist ties. I think they came with the trash bags to stake up these guys that are already, depending on the trellis, that are already leaning on it. And then I'll go through and prune from there, I think. When I'm twisting these in, I'm leaving a lot of space. These are loose enough that the tomatoes can move around a little bit without rubbing um, and getting too nasty. As I'm tying this up, I'm also seeing things like volunteer tomatillos and sunflowers and fruit. Y'all, this is some sweaty work. Um, it is warm, but it's only gonna get warmer today while there's daylight, so I'm gonna work out here for a, a half hour, hour more. I just, ugh, I'm melting, ugh, melting. So we've got, we've got everybody up. Uh, the next step is gonna be to create some kind of airflow down at the bottom. So I'm gonna go in with my pruners um, and I'm just gonna pull anything that's close to the ground, uh, yellowed, funky looking, all that stuff. Let's get it on. Let's get this done. So let's take a look. We've got this one separated out pretty well um, between the plants, the front plants and the back plants over here. So now we're gonna go down to the bottom and take a look at what's going on. I'm just taking off the leaves that are close to the ground that are touching because we don't want them to have yucky stuff happening. I oh, wish you could smell this. I'm right on top of the basil. Just these, these littlest leaves in here. So yeah, just taking out anything that's gonna create an airflow problem and some weeding. See down here at the bottom? That tomato is creating new roots right off of the stalk, right off the stem. This is what we want it to look like. Where the congestion at the bottom has been alleviated. There's airflow through here and we have everything exposed to sun. I'm gonna get these last three buckets cleaned out um, and down to roughly what I did with that bucket. Um, so pray for me. Looks good. I'm pretty pleased. Um, it's gonna look ragtag for a few minutes uh, while it grows in. We need to do something about these guys in the back that I did not realize were indeterminate. Um, 
because they are just flopping all over the place. <laughs> Funny how a good looking man looks good in the middle of any garden you put him in. It's really hot out, y'all. <laughs> these are the, all the tomato trimmings that looked really good and I'm gonna put these guys in some water and see if I can't reroute them. This one in particular, this one I have a lot of optimism about. You can see how it already wants to root. All these little knobbies, those are going to be roots. Come on over to the sink, we'll start them up. I have these, um, got three of them. They're left over from, I don't know what they're left over from. They were full the other day, so I put these guys up in a glass. And you can see, this is about five days, four days of growth. So tomatoes are really forgiving. Pieces that you get off the plants outside, you can put them in water, and this is what happens. We're gonna start off with one of these. We've got all of these folks. Um, this one's the easiest, because it's long. I'm actually gonna break it right here. and pop it right into the water. So when you take one of these out, whether it be a sucker or a trimming, you wanna take all the leaves that could be in the water off of it before you put it in the water. And sometimes I'll snip the bottoms and just clean them up a little bit and take off any leaves that could end up in the water because they'll just sit in there and rot um, and it's gross and smelly. It goes right in. They look kind of crap now, but we're gonna give them an hour in the water and see how they do. If anybody doesn't recover within the hour, hour and a half, um, I'll get rid of those. This stuff is not as desirable as those ones. They, you'll see they've got some marks on them. Um, some of them are really scraggly. Like this guy just isn't gonna do real well. So this stuff will, it's not diseased, it's just yucky. So it'll go into compost. You all were with us the other day when we cooked up all those beautiful garlic scapes um, and I wound up putting a bunch of them in the freezer and we're gonna air fry them at some point. Um, but in the meanwhile, uh, Lib's friend Claude brought us all these beautiful scapes from his parents' farm. And garlic scapes. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, I've got these cleaned off, is I'm gonna knot them up and just put them in the freezer just as knots. And that way I can pull them out beer batter them while they're still kind of frozen and cook them that way. So for the time being, I'm gonna hang out with you, make some knots. One of the reasons that I saved all of those tomato pieces um, is that my mom has been ill and because of that, she hasn't had a whole lot of time to plant her garden and it makes her sad when she doesn't have a garden. So what I'm hoping to do is get those started and then bring them over to her place and put them in the ground. We'll see how this goes. A lot of people around me right now are suffering some health complaints. My part right now is to be available and to be able to be of service. We are in a season of chaos right now. So it's been a few days and I figured I'd bring you back to the chicken coop to see how the wood chips are working out. I am so happy about this. Come look, come look. Here's my girls and here's the run. And most importantly, it does not smell. It does not smell. And the girls have done a bunch of digging down to the bottom and it still isn't stinky. It's also not muddy. It's not slippery. We're getting clean eggs because our girls have someplace dry to stand. Um, and everybody seems to be really enjoying this. We also did the goat run. Come look at that. This, uh, this was some of the hardest work I have ever done. Because of the way everything lines up, it's hard to get wheelbarrows and stuff in here. We wound up throwing really big piles down here at the end and then having to move them over 
So this was a lot of work, but it's so worth it. Again, we're not dealing with mud. Um, the animals are churning it up, but it's, but it's holding up to it really well. Um, we're not slipping in poopy mud and straw. And also the goats like to eat it. So, hey, win-win. So that's us here in the beginning of July, 2023. Thanks so much for hanging out. We'll catch up soon. Take care. I just brushed my teeth and those are so sour.